Hi, Landy Kev here. Now I've got a video coming up. I just forgot to do the um, little intro bit at the beginning. So I'll add this on, um, different time of the day. So being a complete idiot, you should know to expect that from me now. So <laughs> anyway, uh, enjoy the video and um, I'll see you at the end. Cheers now, bye bye. Got something to show you. So I popped and saw a good friend of mine yesterday, Mr. Ian Henderson at LCG Coolers. And I came away with a set of MIP drive shafts. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is just show you what's in the packets. And then um, at some point I will then show you uh, how easy they go together and, and, and stuff. But so... I'll, I'll tilt you down, we'll, we'll have a look, and um, I have got my old dry shafts off the um, comp rig, so we can kind of compare the finish and that, now bear in mind they are cheaper ones, um, so, but it was, a uh, what I did was try the cheaper ones to see how they did, and I like how they perform, so hence I've gone for something a little bit better, um, a bit more finish nicer so um, I'm going to tilt you down and then what we're going to do is try and um, talk through what we can see here so hopefully you can see that okay so basically what I've got here is um, says on my ticket because I actually um, threw the package in away yesterday so when I was at Ian's so never mind so what I have is me is the, the heavy duty centre drive shaft kit um, it goes from 104 to 142 millimetres in length. So it goes, you know, from there to there kind of thing. Um, yeah, the part number is 18160. Um, so if you, you hit, hit this site and you can see there's two, two sets. I think one's for... Uh, an element and one's for an SCX 10 as in a kit but you can buy all the extra bits and pieces uh, to, to actually customize it so you can buy longer ones or shorter ones you know individually so it comes with a couple of different size ends that will go onto your motor and axle um, and then what you do get is a super long one um, just in case you've got a real but what you get is all the hardware. Hopefully you can see this. You get all the hardware. So these are the, you know, the bits that go in here for you to then lock it in and, you know. Um, it comes with all these shims so that you can eliminate the backwards and forwards slop on your axle. You can just, um, you know, fit it nice and snug. And there's a couple of different sizes of shims depending on how much, you know, you've got to do. So... It also comes with all the grub screws, the pins, the locking pins. It comes with some grease for you to put inside, you know, and then it also comes with some thread lock. As we all know, we don't need a lot of thread lock, but it just stops it vibrating out. What I might also do is do what I've done before is basically put a bit of heat shrink over the bit that's bolted onto it, you know, it's like a belt, braces and belt situation. It's thread locked in. But is it also going to rattle out at any point? So it's kind of, you know, you kind of cover both angles. But on the on, on the actual things themselves, they look really nicely finished. They're quite weighty, actually. Um, they do look uh, pretty cool that way. And when you, you're there, there's, there's no play. You know, they really... The play that there is is bare minimum that it has to be for this thing to be able to slide in. Other than that, it's not hit and miss. It isn't, doesn't feel like it's going to strip out anytime soon. Uh, the finish lovely. I have to say, they're very well made, as you'd expect. But they have been making them a while, so, um, you know, I think they know what they're doing. Uh, Weight-wise, though, they're pretty good. Um, not bad. So it'll give you a lot of low-down weight, but, you know, what we've how motors are and things like that nowadays um, and all the power you can get you kind of need something that can take that power and I think you know these are going to be that especially if you're having a burst of power 
either with a cord or even I'm not sure about bashes as you all know I don't don't really do bashes uh, so I, you know I don't understand the dynamics but with the coolers um yeah anything that give the the, the comp rig a blast to get it you know going or up something um it isn't gonna twist this around or even strip it inside so um yeah i'm looking forward to it so what i'll do is i'll pause the video here and then i'm going to put one together uh so i can see how it goes um rather than making the the video stupid long and then what i'll do is i'll do the other one and basically we'll film that um but one because it will be a quicker process i know i know exactly how it goes and then i can also explain what i'm doing at the same time um and yeah so i mean you know these are the the ones that were the cheap ones that were bought just to, for me to test and as you can see you've got well we've got one two three four five there's six there and there's quite a bit of movement considering but this one yeah we've got one two three four five six seven eight the nine even i think yeah there's nine so then hello again brief brief intermission really wasn't it brief about hopefully i had time for a cup of tea or coffee and here we go again so i'll put one on um yeah go on nice and easy so um you got to use some shims well I, I needed some shims on the front um one i'm not sure about the back yet but what we do is we'll i'll film it and we'll go through it excuse me um and then we'll see see what what goes so um shall we start so i'm going to point it down as the best way possible i don't know which that is yet so it could be a bit tricky bear with bear with all right then so we've got to try and put you down so you can see i don't know if you can see that okay but yeah um it's a bit tricky because there's certain bits you're not going to be able to see unfortunately but we'll try our best we'll try our best won't we Let's see what we can do right so basically here and here so you now i used the shorter ones of these on the front it seemed to work quite well it's fitted quite nice but this being a bit longer at the back i'm going to use these ones and if that doesn't work, I have got the one that was super long, so I can put it on one end. So um, we'll try this. So basically, um, again, it's uh, you, I always try and match the the holes together. That way, everything that goes kind of goes together. Although it's uh, not as critical as some, like these ones, for instance, that have the particular shape so you want it to be the same both ways these are shaped a little differently so a lot more round so the but as a force of habit i think it's time to do that so i think what we're going to do is put one of these on this part so what you need is you need the insert that goes inside so it gives you where the pin will go so that's in there like so then you want to look at which side the thread's on for the locking grub screw, which it's that side. So what we're going to do then is we're going to sort of, I don't know if you can see, we're just going to marry them up. So what we want to do then, so we're now like this, and what we're going to do is place one of these in. It has a little uh, cutout section, I don't know how well you can see that um yeah not very well um so it just means that the so that goes through and we'll locate into the thing if we can get it very tricky oh there we go it's kind of going right there we are so that's that's all in uh, well, we're too close. So yeah, it's all in there. That now does its thing. Uh, so now what we need to do is locate the 
Well, that doesn't work, because it's gone in the wrong way. Let me take that out. Relocate that. And then that through there. Back through there again, and here we are. So now what that enables you to do is to get where the grub screw's got to go in there. Um, so basically, you only want a little bit of thread lock. We all know this, but, you know, it could be somebody watching that has just started, so uh, that's even newer than I am at this, so um, we can kind of help them, can't we? That's how I look at it. Right, so, yeah, a minimal amount of thread lock, literally. You don't want a lot because you never get this thing out otherwise. So it is only a tiny little bit. Just enough to sort of lock it in. So remember we've now got this all done. This is where we're going to go in. So we put the grub screw in there. And it should go in. Why is it not going in? <laughs> Oh, tricky man. It's because this is it is putting it the wrong one. See? That's why you gotta check. So just sort of nip it up. So you ain't gotta try and really crank it because you know it should hold itself. Um it's gonna be very rare, it's gonna be at such an angle all the time for it to come out, but you know, it's a possibility, I guess, the way things go. Uh, so now we're going to do the same to the other side, um, very much the same thing. So it's just basically this part in, in there, and we're going to do the whole pin in again. I don't know if you can still see, the trouble is it's black, so it's just, you know, doesn't show up too good once you've got your hands Stick them all over it. Right, so we've got the uh, bit all done. We've got grease on there to keep it nice and smooth. We've got everything lined up. Um, so now it's just a case of putting these little shims on. So the way I'm doing it is doing it sort of one of these slightly bigger ones first um, so basically can you see uh, I don't know if you can you keep moving the camera so basically you put this on there like so I should think a lot of you know I have to do this anyway I think it's just um, you know So two, this in there, and one more on the end because we only put a couple on the other side. So them ones are on there. Now these ones on here are definitely going to be a little bit, a little bit more tricky because they're underneath. So I'll come up with this little way of doing. So put it on. Because I really don't want to take this apart because, you know, I really don't. So basically, it's there like so. I knock it down. And basically, somewhere, I can get this thing on. Is the plan. I've got a funny feeling it ain't going to work very well. Um, because <laughs> Kev wants it to work really well, but it isn't going to work really well. All because we want it to work really well, so we're going to have to improvise. Now, for some reason, I can't find my tweezers. we got it now 
obviously this job would be easier if you took everything off that you're supposed to um, but I really didn't want to um, so it's a bit more labor intensive and can be quite frustrating uh, if you're doing stuff and you just think what the hell but hopefully we're getting it so we are improvising as we go which is one thing I've learned with this hobby is it's all about finding ways to do something that it isn't the normal way because I don't think anything I've ever done in this hobby when I've done upgrades or has ever gone perfectly smoothly um, so I think it's just how it is it's the nature of the beast as they say so it's just a case of Well, considering they're going on pretty well, I have to say. I'm kind of pleased. I'm sure you'll all have your own ways of doing the things you do with your trucks that are, you know, a little bit not quite the real proper way, as some people will say, but um, the results are the same. You know, right. So we're in there. Good, good. Right, so now it's just a case of let's get these joined up um, and uh, put together nicely. So make sure we have the bigger end at the top because that's where the screw goes in. And if we ain't got that right, it's kind of a bit of a mess. So hence, hence now, remember a little bit of Loctite, not too much um because we really want to be able to get these things off if we have to you know for various reasons not so much that the dry shafts themselves have have kind of um given up the ghost i think it's more if you're changing stuff here or there and you know um we've just got to locate the There we go. Right. Oh, not working. Oh. Tricky. Well, it's not going very well, is it? Eh? Not going very well at all. So, a few, a few problems. Well, they're not problems, it's just, you know, it doesn't want to go on as easy as it came off. But, it will get there. So, um, where are we? So we are, okay. Right, we've got everything in there. 
Now we want the grub screw, so let's find the right side this time because it's always advantageous. It's that side. So again, grub screw, a little bit of the free lock, not too much again because, you know, If you ever watch someone on the trail trying to get one of these things off when it's got too much thread lock it's near impossible so although that isn't the end of the world it's more of these ones if they don't go in right so then we've got we've got them set so they're all done thread locked up and all in nicely now we need to just work out the best way we're doing this um so I, like i say i have the pins exactly the same way so both pins are here um and now it's just a case of can we locate it? What we want to do is have some grease in. So what we'll do is we'll put some grease in the thing. There we go. I'll just put it in there and then I will enable it to find its own, own way in and out because it just, I just move this around. Otherwise what it is, you put it all on there and it pushes it all to this end and then it's like you ain't got none that way so that's how hard i do it personally um but everyone obviously is different um so and that way there's always a stream of always a stream of grease being put on it and done and just keeps everything moving sleek and like that really so we just wipe the excess off we all get mucky don't we so now now i don't know if you can see but i always put the thicker end of the, the dryer shaft towards the axle because it will take more of a battering on that than it will the thinner end that's my uh that's my view but i'm going to pause it now just for a moment so bear with right excuse me right so last one in uh, a little bit of thread lock as we know. A little bit holds it in. Put that in. And that's them in. Minimal. Minimal amount of movement minimal and that's just slopping the gearbox while i'm thinking the, the pumpkin but um apart from that right let's flip you back up and hey there you are right so that's that's then fitted uh pretty easy to fit really um very well made um as far as i'm concerned um they feel smooth. Um, yeah, yeah, they feel smooth. Um, so impressions uh, worth every single penny. Um, I'm not one for, um, you know, I'll buy it if I can afford it. And if I can afford to buy better, I will buy better. Um, like I say, I didn't in the first instances because I wanted to try them uh, compared to what um, the Wild Boar's uh, drive shaft offered. Um, and they seem to work okay, but could be better. So, hence, so yeah, all in all, the MIP drive shafts, thumbs up from me. Um, so, yeah, if you'd like to just hit over to Ian is LCG callers and I'm sure he'll be able to hook you up with all the needs that you have. Um, you know, just send him a message or email him, I'm sure. Um, and, and that's it, guys. Uh, what I'll do is probably at some point do a follow-up thing, just giving you... I've got um, round four of the Burks um, comp coming on so the southern series of the gcrc thing so what i might do is a little thing after that to tell you how they performed and do you have any issues and and go from that so just a little like uh, a little just a 
let keep you informed how I found them, did I have any issues, and if I have any issues, you know, I'll let you know, but I can't see it. But I'll just let you know how they perform in a comp. Um, anyway, so that's me signing off. Hopefully you found this video okay to watch. I'm not a great, great film filmographer, um, but hopefully uh, you've enjoyed the video. If so, then, you know, give me a thumbs up. That'd be nice. Um, um, and then any comments, if there's any questions you kind of want answering and I maybe didn't cover it, just ask me because if I don't know it, I'll find it out from here. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's me going to sign out. Take care of yourselves and the loved ones that are important to you. And uh, this is Landy Kev saying, see you sometime. Ta-da.